Hey, y'all. Before we start, I just wanted to announce that Our Mom Critiques Wild Bow now has its own feed. Um, I think we're going to continue publishing episodes in the Pale in Comparison feed, but you can also subscribe to its own feed and tell people who haven't read Pact to check out our podcast. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Mom Critiques Wild Bow, a proud member of the Doof Network. In this podcast, my sister and I force our mother to read Pale, Wild Bow's least gory work. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. And I'm their mom, and the girls got me hooked on this book. This episode, we are covering the first half of Arc One of Pale, Lost for Words. All right. Well, we're going to start going over a summary of chapters real quick. Mom, how did you like this section? You can't just ask me a question like that. <laughs> what do you mean? Maybe mean? that's because I could talk for half an hour on. Yeah, I would say. Um, yeah, I, re- I did really like it. I mean, like is not the word I would use, but I want to <laughs> read some more. Put it that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to the author, but, uh, you know, I he's a really good writer and I'm sucked in, sucked in. But it's disturbing. OK, so that's my answer. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's. All right. Fair enough. Um, all right. We'll start with 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, Verona does some chores, thinks about how creepy Miss is, and meets up with Lucy and Avery to do a ritual. In 1.2, after a lot of drawing and much needed exposition, we see the awakening ritual. And even though they're not asked to solve it, just look into it. The investigation begins. 1.2 extra material. Lucy writes thorough and useful notes on the Kenneth others. In 1.3, we go on a road trip. The girls go to the Carmine Beast territory with Matthew, Edith, and Charles and meet the other three judges. I was expecting the road trip to sound much more excited. Road like, trip! Road trip! <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll edit that in. In 1.4, the trio returns home and we see the hecticness of Avery's house. And finally, in the 1.4 extra materials... Verona has made some useful notes for visual learners like me on circles and diagrams. Okay, right. mom. So um, our plan is just to kind of talk to you about this whole section that we read. Um, instead of like going through beat by beat, we just kind of want to get some of your like broad overviews because um, we think it's better to cover this much material this way. Um, so what do you want to do? We like I can start asking you some questions or do you have anything you want to say before we start no you just go just fire off some questions okay so the first one is um what do you think about our protagonists lucy avery and verona okay well i'm getting to know them a lot better and um i i i like them all i have to say that i can relate most to avery I think I like Mm -hmm. her the best and I really just, I can really relate to her. The others, I can't, you know, quite figure out what's going on in their head. Um, I like the way they have different skills. That's kind of cool. And um, I'm really a little concerned about Avery because of the, um, what she called her brother. I think she might be in trouble. And (laughs) she lied apparently, you know, but I, I thought, I mean, that's, you know, I'm just nervous about that and I want her to be okay. Yeah. So it seems like you have these notes sort of briefly written down. I was wondering, could you go a little bit into detail about each of them? I'll ask you first about Lucy. What do you think about her? What's her main thing? Oh, well, I just, you know, I know that she's, in, she's on top of the investigation. She seems mm-hmm. really um, like the one who's taking notes and interviewing and keeping track of things, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, so that was important. And then mm-hmm. Avery is well, okay. Verona I'll do next. Now she um, was supposed to be the one doing the practice. Now tell me what that is. That means like she's yeah. Jenny's laughing. Okay. Jen, tell me what that is. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of a word for like, um, like, I guess the magic system, like, um, okay. doing the magic stuff. 
Okay, that makes sense. That's a great I think explanation she's the there. One, <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, but okay. she's the one who was like um, kind of catching on really quick and they thought she would be really good at this. And then mm-hmm. Avery, poor A- this is why I can relate to Avery because she, she didn't have a thing, you know? <laughs> and she's like, oh, they're doing all these things. I think I can maybe do the site, you know? So she's trying to focus on that, which works best when you don't focus on it for some reason. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I I thought that was you know, I, I just can relate to all the stuff she's going to, but she's going to get good at this. She's, she is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So do you think that they, um, cause they're all 13. Um, do they oh, really? Yes. Right. They're 13. That's yeah. why Charles freaks out. Mm-hmm. So do they kind of read like 13 year olds that you've met before? Like when we were 13, um, did we act like that? Or do you think you're like oh, no, way more I think, mature. Oh way no, less, or... I think they're they're. You guys were really bright and um, and yeah, definitely could be thirteen. See, I was thinking there may be like fifteen or something, but anywhere around there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Cool. Um, so what do you think of the others that we introduced you to in the story? Um, and who is your favorite and least favorite? And tell us why. Okay, the others. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're really interesting. They're all kind of different. Um, I like that. I mean, I don't know. I'll just go into this. My favorite other, um, hands down, is the goblins. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are just really no, no, they're just nasty, nasty little dramatic dudes, you know? And that's why I didn't expect it. (laughs) Really? No, no, they're hilarious. They're they are though. They make me cringe. I mean, good grief. But but yeah, they're kind of an evil sort of fun. And 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 I love their I, I mean, I thought that'd be your favorite too. Those guys are hilarious and they're not going to get in too much trouble because when they start to get in serious, you know, want to hurt somebody or something, they'll just get in a fight with each other and it'll all go that way. <laughs> and so I, I really think they're fun and they have the best names ever. So yeah, they're my favorites. And then my <laughs> least, my least favorite, see, this is, I don't know what you expected, but my least favorite is the fairies because they make me really them. nervous. <laughs> No, they just, mm. they don't tell what's going on. They all, they all have secrets. They look really pretty and have wings and they're bad news. So I don't try, I would never trust a fairy. So yeah. Good job, mom. Hmm. That's <laughs> okay. That's one of the lessons of this book series. <laughs> don't trust a fairy. Okay. <laughs> yep. You're not supposed to tell her that. <laughs> well, they, they've they started telling no, but her I already, already know this. I know. Yeah. yeah I could you tell. Know. Can I ask you, can I ask you guys back? Yeah, please. Or is this supposed to be, oh, well. No, go just, for it. I want to know what your favorites are and your least favorites. Hmm, I'm trying to remember you who already I said know, my favorite Malia, was before, You already but... know what's happening. Well, Jenny does too, sort of. Oh, I mean, Jenny does more than I do. <laughs> oh, um, okay, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, Jenny's just clueless. So, <laughs> well, I was I was gonna say at this point I didn't like the goblins. I thought the whole like I'm gonna pull poop out of my pants was like a lot. Um, at this oh, point, really? I didn't like Come any on. of them. <laughs> yes, Malia, you grew up in a uh, home with your dad. I mean, you should be okay with never this pulled stuff. poop out of his <laughs> face. <laughs> goodness, yeah, what let's are make you that lying? real clear, people. <laughs> <laughs> like he it maybe was... made fart jokes sometimes, but like yeah, fart jokes. You know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Okay, um, I didn't. Okay, um, I think I was excited by the fairy and was like ooh they're cool but I was like at this stage like super afraid of everyone <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't remember who I liked at this point um, I want to I mean I don't know I feel like I mean I like John mm. which might surprise you that surprises but, me mm-hmm. I like John you'll probably like him more later um, <laughs> okay why, why is that? No, we'll get it's yeah, we'll She's get like, into that hmm. later. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Mom has like kept a lot of her notes from us, so we're just sort of reacting to whatever she's saying. Yeah. Uh yeah, that's, that's funny fair. the goblins. Um yeah. I, I Is that love why you married dad? Because like, yeah. fart jokes. That's secretly well, what you know. 
I kind of like that bad boy side of him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't know that? No, he's really irreverent and funny. And I was, you know, I was young then. So I thought that stuff was fun. Now it's not so fun, you know? You're married 37 years and ir- irreverence and that kind of funniness just kind of gets old. But, you know. Except not because you like the goblins. So. I like the goblins. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it all makes sense, you guys. It all makes sense. Uh, okay. So a big part of this section was the awakening ritual. So what parts of the awakening which ritual stood out to you? And um, kind of talk through some of the different components and... Um, what do you think they mean? Okay, that's that's tough. I'll say um, <laughs> what, what stood out to me is, I, I mean, basically, I don't get it and I don't understand hardly any of it. So I'll just say that as a disclaimer. <laughs> but um, but I kind of it was kind of cool with the drawing the circle in the ground. They had to draw a really decent circle, and I like the part about um, the stage tilting and the ba- pa- balance of power could shift and all that. I mean, that's very cool. And I know it's coming, obviously, you know, so um, yeah, there's trouble coming. I just haven't gotten there yet. And um, I like the way everyone left in different ways, Mm -hmm. you know, through different things. And, and I can't remember anything. I mean, there were like knives and coins and time a time thing so yep, i yep, i yep. you remember things okay so yeah okay but Glad i you took such thorough you notes I, yeah but you did but you asked like what do they mean uh yeah i don't know well, let me try to look back here um just to some of the objects just to see if they okay it kind of rings a bell okay so there's a knife that's got to be you know violence and killing and hurting people, you know, which, yeah, I can see is coming. And a coin, which is Mm -hmm. the coin might not mean money. It might mean like giving offerings or giving somebody your hat or whatever it is. And then um, thread. Ooh, what would thread be? Like a connection, like those spiderweb things, whatever the Mm -hmm. heck that was. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I'm guessing I'm a timepiece, which is really... Maybe it's something to do with those journeys that they took. They took 24 hours, but hmm. I have no idea. And hmm. um, and the skull, that's the bitter end. When it, <laughs> it just makes me think of Charles. Poor Charles, you know. <laughs> These guys are terrible. Oh, Charles. <laughs> yes, everything sucks. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did, so... A question about the extra materials. Do you think that that helped like Lucy's whole breakdown of like all the different others and like they came in through the coin and they left through the skull or whatever? Like, did that was that helpful? Slash like Verona's notes where you see the awakening ritual diagram. Were those useful to you? Oh, totally. Yeah, I really like that. I like the extra stuff and the diagrams and all that stuff. It really helps you when you got some vague idea of things. Yeah, it helped Mm -hmm. me. (laughs) Okay. And they're really interesting. Yeah, I liked them. Okay, good. Um, um, Okay, so (laughs) question, would you let Jenny or I get into this sort of thing? And why do you think the three (laughs) Kenneteers have chosen to do this? Oh, sure. I'd let you just go out in the woods with a bunch of, I mean, gee, no way. (laughs) Yeah, with a bunch of monsters and weirdos. No. Yeah, no. And, and teenagers do this kind of stuff. I mean, you guys, you guys seem really pretty good to me, but you probably did all kinds of stuff that I haven't heard about yet. (laughs) So teenagers do stuff because they think that because they're bored. I think that's the first Mm -hmm. thing. They're bored. And they also think nothing's ever going to happen to me. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, they're invincible sort of a thing. Invincible. That's the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can tell you I've never done anything like this. <laughs> Same. <laughs> if that makes you feel okay. better. I feel better. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jen. And Mal- <laughs> Malia doesn't respond. Okay. I said same. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. that's um, She's secretly like, you know, this is based on part of her life. It's based on my life. She, yeah. This is why I'm we're doing this bow. podcast. <laughs> yeah. 
No, but she was, scared to, she was scared to read dead dog books. She would never read dead dogs books. And she would I mean, cry to be fair, those well, dead. The no, dead no, dog books weren't scary. It's just that my fourth grade teacher made us read basically every single one that was ever written. And I got really fed up. <laughs> well, that's so I was kind like, of I don't awful. need to experience this sadness over and over. This is <laughs> unfair. I didn't realize that they made you read that in fourth grade. That's yep. really young for one. Yep. To- Let me see. Sounder, Old Yeller. Where the Red Fern Grows, Julie and the Wolves. Um, <gasps> wow. God, there was another one. My my friends and I made like a little like fake club called No More Dead Dog Stories. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a whole thing. Wow. wow. Oh, oh yeah. you're so traumatized. I'm sorry. Man, I guess I had a different teacher in fourth grade than you did. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that, that sucks. <laughs> um, so does the kids, the teenagers decision to do this thing does that reflect on their parents do you think and like what do you think about their parents given their choice to go into the woods and like swear their lives to these monsters (laughs) yeah but aren't isn't there some kind of thing where the parents forget or can't see what's happening i mean yeah i mean they don't their their parents don't know that they're doing this but like do you think the fact that they were like you know that they were like yeah, this is a good idea. Like, does that reflect on the parenting or on their home life or anything? Or you think this is just something a bunch of like healthy, well-rounded kids would just decide <laughs> to do? No, I didn't. Um, I, I think that um, even if you have really good parents, that if you're bored, and uh, that you can um, go a lot of different directions that you shouldn't go especially at that age. So um, speaking as a parent, no, I won't, I won't blame it on the parents. (laughs) I'll I'll defend them, but I think it's good to keep your kids busy, you know, keep them busy. That's Mm -hmm. why my thing was get a job. And dad's thing was you've got to play sport, every sport there is. So we wanted you guys, I, we just thought it was good for you to um, not be moping around the house, but to stay busy. Next question. um, Who killed the Carmine beast? Okay, now I have no idea, no idea. So I kind of was thinking and thinking about the obvious ones, like that lady you can't see your face and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, no, it's just too obvious. So I'm, I'm going with John, who you oh, guys like. Okay, okay. That's yeah, bold. no, I'm going with John. I don't know, I don't know, but he's gonna, he's gonna rise to power with that beast because that's my, hmm. that's my guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Why? I mean, just vibes that you get from him in general or like. Oh, and just little clues. I mean, he's killed before and he's kind of and I in some way um, when they were talking about things, they said either he would be one to um, replace the beast or else that horrible choir. <laughs> and I just can't take it if they <laughs> I can't take it. I'd, I'd vote for John. <laughs> okay, so but, do you think that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's all. Oh, um, do you think any of the other others have killed before or you think it's just John? I know that's kind of true. No, I think they've all <laughs> killed people. I think that's I think they don't have it. It's yeah, I do. I think um, fairies are evil. If if the goblins have killed, it's by accident, you know, because they just, you know, what? they blew something up or who knows, you know, they're blowing up an outhouse and it, you know, killed somebody mm-hmm. that was inside mm-hmm. or who knows, because they're just <laughs> naughty. But um, yeah. <laughs> So you mentioned the choir, and I'm curious as to, like, what are your thoughts on the choir? The choir is who I'm most scared of. I just don't like it. I don't I don't know. It's creepy, and they're powerful, and um, they're really bad. And they, I, I don't know. I don't like that singing in the background. What do you think so, they do? Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you think they are? Yeah, like dead people that are that are roaming around that aren't happy and and at peace. <laughs> They're dead people that are that are disturbed that want to yeah, that's disturb fair. others. I mean, sure. I don't know. It's it's not good. Why do you I think they're like... called the Hungry Choir? Oh, cuz they want to get people. <gasps> yeah, see that I don't know. <laughs> I don't know cuz they're never satisfied. 
Mm, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's food or whatever. It's not deep. It's just they're hungry. (laughs) You know, I'm hungry all the time. You guys know me. So I'm never satisfied. (laughs) I need to always get yeah, the next best restaurant or food truck. See, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen I don't know if either of you have seen Hamilton yet, but this reminds me of a song in Hamilton. I've seen snippets of it, but I haven't actually seen the whole thing yet. Okay, what okay. song? Satisfied. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so no, not... it's just the hungry choir singing satisfied. <laughs> it's real bad. Sorry, everyone. So are they satisfied or not satisfied? Oh, we're, we're they're not satisfied. Oh, really? I mean, they're okay. never they're never satisfied. No, but is Hamilton not satisfied? No, that yeah, no. That's the whole thing is they're not satisfied. Ah. In the in the song. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to look up that song, I guess. Yeah. It's a good song. What do you think? Um I mean, I don't know, the hungry choir. What do you think would make them not hungry? If you had to pick a food to give to the hungry choir, what do you think would oh, be the most gosh. likely I'm to s- satisfy them? I'm or so like an sorry experience. you asked that because no, I would just say Charles. They were they were <laughs> Okay, I'm happy that you laugh because that means maybe that's not what's going to happen to Charles. You know, maybe <laughs> Charles. Um, no, I was talking about some real... kind of a food, and you're like, of no, course they're going to eat him. They're going to eat him. It's like I don't know who these guys are. You know, so I was just thinking they would cook him really slowly, and they might eat him. Malia said something really bad is going to happen, and she's scared for me. So I'm thinking well, of these horrible things. Right. So the. Mom knows that at the end of arc one has this like really intense part and she doesn't know Mm -hmm. what it is. It's just that like both Jenny and I, I think, and some of the listeners were concerned that mom isn't going to make it. (laughs) (laughs) I I told her mom if she can, she will, but I told her if she can get past arc one, the, and like the, whatever happens at the end of it, like she can get through the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why she knows that something's happening and, um, she seems or what do you think is going to happen, mom? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's going to, okay. What I think is going to happen is something really horrible is going to happen to poor Charles. I mean, he doesn't deserve that. Dang. He's, I mean, really poor Charles. So I guess, yeah, I'm going to answer that question about Charles. I think that um, either, okay. The first one was the hungry choir. It would be the hungry choir surrounds him in a circle and he's in the middle. And Mm -hmm. um, so either they basically do something and eat him, you know, I don't know. And so that's one, or else I thought of another thing they might do, which is to surround him and sing louder and louder, really, really out of tune until he loses his mind. (laughs) Mm. How do you like that one? It just goes bats. Like baby shark over and over. I yeah. Oh, yeah. That love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or else there was another idea that popped into my mind that would be kind of cool, but um, it's but it's, it's still bad for Charles. Is that you would throw <laughs> all those um, all you would put him in an escape room, you know, with like a knife <laughs> and some coins <laughs> and thread. What was the other timepiece and skull? The skull and. Yeah, and he would have to try to solve the thing, and he would just be there forever, you know, <laughs> with these lame, these lame, you know, <laughs> hints coming his way, and he would never be able to get out. And he'd probably hear the music of the ang- of the angry, the hungry choir in the background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be, so yeah, good thing that the others aren't it- real because they'd be taking notes right now. Be like, Who what can <laughs> yeah. we do? Well, like the like singing until someone goes mad. That's like, that's creepy and twisted. If you had a baby shark, what would be the best song to sing until someone goes mad? Either off tune or not. Bottles of beer on the wall. I don't know. (laughs) That's a good one. That's a pretty bad one. That's pretty bad. Or this is a song that never ends. Oh, Oh, definitely that one. Yeah. I, I mean, like, there's uh, some really bad ones. Oh, I know, I know that song that um, when we were small, um, the cake in the rain. <laughs> oh my, my god, gosh. MacArthur Park. Mac- yeah, MacArthur. Uh, Park. If you guys Park. don't know that song, it is his such terrible lyrics. It's like so it's bad, so stupid. It's, it's so like good. so bad, it's almost good. But <laughs> and that was like would... a huge number one hit when I was younger. So you oh, really have to look that up. 
the because f- the first it's horrible. The first Dumbledore sang it, right? What was the oh, first yeah, Dumbledore's I think name? he did, didn't he? Yeah. Huh. Richard. Yeah, so what's his name? Chamberlain? Was he Dumbledore? Sir Richard Harris. <laughs> Richard Harris. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. See, I got the first name right. I was like, Richard? I think he's a sir. Anyway. I think so. I, know. I mean, it's pretty for him for having to, I mean, for, yeah. I mean, that, that song is terrible. Yeah. Richard Harris is wonderful, <laughs> but like, even he can't make MacArthur Park good. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> no, it's I hilarious. Choo- yeah, I choose that one for like the word, the one that would make you go out of your mind. Cause would it be better? Would it be more effective out of tune or like in tune, you think? <laughs> no, in tune because they try so hard. It's like, I think that I can make it, you know, because it's, it, no, just in tune because they're really, they're passionate in that song about the cake that's been left out in the rain. It's just, they'll never have the recipe song. again. And they said, what? Yeah, it's yeah. sad. <laughs> I, I it's sad that it was a number one song. That's what's sad. That is sad. I mean, it okay. was just on the radio. Okay, let's get off that song. Oh, well, real quick. Um, I just found an article that is on businessinsider.com. I, granted, I just found this, so this might not be legit, but I'm going to I'm gonna share it anyway. Um, it says, 11 popular songs the CIA used to torture terror suspects. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just go down this. Um, Where do you get this junk? Huh? That's crazy. <laughs> Wow. Some of these I am not familiar with, to be honest, but guess what? Just like, I don't know, if you had to take a guess, like, what the th- number one song would be. Oh, oh I thought Barney. Of another one. The Barney song. That is not on this list. What? They, <laughs> CIA needs to step their game up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, let me see. Number one, we'll start from, I don't know. We'll start from number 11. Um, it's we Are the Champions by Queen. Really? Number okay. eleven. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, some of these it's I don't that know. Bad. Um, Ten is "F Your God" by Deceed. I don't oh, know that song. Rather, um, yeah. nine is "The Beautiful People" by Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Eight belongs on this list and should be higher. It is the Meow Mix theme. <laughs> It's such a good one. It's such a good one. <laughs> Seven is Saturday Night Fever by the Bee Gees. Oh, oh come I on. missed it. That's you not guys, fair. I, I apologize to you because you were right. They have I Love You by the Barney theme. Hey, That's number good. six. Yay, I have missed yay. I skipped over that. Oh. Um number five is Babylon by David Gray. Um hmm. four is Oh, I, I know, know Babylon. Oh yeah. Do you? Is that yeah. <laughs> yeah, CIA I, torture song. Yeah. yeah, I have a boyfriend that sang that in the car once to me, and I thought, man, I need to break up with him. You... Yeah, it really <laughs> made me uneasy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's not a dating Why? song. I, I need to look okay, that up you later. Because look it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, four is um, Zik Rayadi or My Memories by Muhammad El Kwasabgi. I probably butchered that name, but I've never heard of that. Um, three is Dirty by Christina Aguilera. <laughs> nice. Two is Take Your Best Shot by Dope. And the number one CIA torture song, according to businessinsider.com, is The Real Slim Shady by Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. uh. I'm bummed MacArthur Park wasn't on there, but I, I am too. too. I'm really, yeah. I mean, they it, just, yeah. they missed it. A... You need to put that in the notes on the bottom so they'll take a look at it. So do your CIA. I, I should. You Although this, this other random thing on Google says, Rawhide is the only song the CIA report explicitly states was used as a torture technique. Um, so I guess they have some random songs that they have used. <gasps> I don't know. I like the Slim Shady, but then again, I've never had to listen it, to it on over repeat. Over and over and over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Meow Mix is definitely the best one. That's good. That one's so like good. That, that one's like, fired. Yeah, that one's... <laughs> Can you imagine the hungry <laughs> choir? No, just being like, meow, 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 Jeez. For international <laughs> yeah, listeners, right, if you've never say, heard that. We should sing it for our um, international listeners. <laughs> 
I know I wasn't going to suggest that. I was going to say just be happy that you haven't heard it because it, unless you have, unless you, you have, and then you I'm get sorry. all our TV. So maybe you have. That's a good point. I mean, we're just spread our influence everywhere. So um. <laughs> okay, Malia, you 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 volunteered, so go ahead and sing meow mix. I don't remember how it ends. Yeah, it's just like it never ends. Yeah, it never ends. Um, it just meow. That's the only word you need to know. Um, oh, ah, that you see, you shouldn't have brought this up, but I. How about that moon song that was so dreadful? You guys we liked like the it. Moon. Oh, oh my god! Who, probably everybody that would have been a good one. Probably too. everybody your, your age thought that, that was, that was amazing. That yeah, was horrible. that was not a Christmas commercial. Yeah, I'm so sorry. You, you guys thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, we, we thought it was it hilarious, just, and I, like yeah, that that's a good. Yeah, no, that was a good one. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That that one's terrible. That was a good one. So if so, assuming that the hungry choir. Um, means that they are a group of others that sing um, food jingles. Um, which <gasps> food jingle would you pick? Now, you Besides Meow me Mix. Before. Besides Meow Mix, yeah. <clears throat> you can pick from when you were little. You can pick... Oh, but I, this is a good one, though. The um, the Oscar Mayer. You know, wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. Yeah. <laughs> That yeah, is that what I really nuts. like to be. Like to be. <laughs> or if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, everyone, everyone would be in love with me. I like that song, though. Well, you know, well, like is a strong word. The okay. first time, about a thousand yeah. times, but you might not. Um, okay. I think that's a good me. one. To okay. Be honest. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Jingles. Okay. Getting back to the question um, who killed the Carmine Beast? <laughs> I told you John. Oh yeah, I forgot. We were got so off topic. But like why do you yeah, think gotta... John? Like why John? No, no, That's I told we already... you all those because I don't know John, but I do I just can't think of anybody else. And Okay, fair enough. The choir is too obvious and the the lady without the face, what is she called? The mat the mass Miss. lady? I don't... Miss, yeah. No, she didn't do it. It's probably the evil fairies. They probably all got together. If it's not John, I would say those fairies. They're they're you know they're so pretty and lovely and have little wings they're bad bad girls are they both pretty did it describe them as being both pretty I'm trying to no, remember one of them has yucky like. matted hair that's the one that follows the fairy around alpi yeah i don't know okay i only know no. one fairy what about the big guy the giant yeah what is he did he do it you just step really? on him like bam, squish. <laughs> oh, like it could have been an accident. He stepped on one of the poor little goblins one time and just went on. Remember? Do you think this is like just a whole misunderstanding where like someone accidentally killed him and was Stepped like, well, her. crap, we can't fess up now. And now there's this whole investigation. <laughs> that would be kind of great. Maybe, maybe after, maybe after um, listening to us then the author will just go in that direction. Like, you're right. I should have done I this. feel like it's a little too far. <laughs> um, not to mention, I, th I think the author has uh, thought some pretty great uh, twists and oh, Okay, things. I'm uh, sure he has. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I'll say, I'll say John, because I don't know who else to say right now. Ask me again next, next time, and I'll change my mind. Um, I had one more question about Charles before we move on. So, like, you seem very sympathetic to Charles but like Avery and Lucy are both like we haven't seen from Verona's point of view yet but they're both think he's really really creepy like do you think they're right or what do you think about that um I don't know why they think he's creepy I can't remember I mean he might be kind of grungy or something but um you know nobody nobody's taking any care of him and he's just waiting to see what horrible thing happens to him because of his rotten friend who stepped on glass or something. I mean, that's not a good reason. The whole thing isn't fair. So I'm on yeah. Charles' side. I mean, I, I, yeah, I just feel bad for him just because he's kind of <clears throat> grungy or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. And he tried it. He wasn't creepy. I mean, he might be creepy, but he did, he tried to talk him out of it. He was trying to be a good guy. But they yeah, wouldn't I listen. So. Yeah, yeah do you think listen. Charles was right? About, yeah, he was right. Yeah, they, sh- yeah, they are well, looking, they are looking for, tr- there's trouble ahead. Trouble ahead. Yeah, the book's not over yet. That's definitely That's true. Super true. So true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, I do want to talk about like the road trip a little bit. Like, um, <gasps> yes. what do you think about, um, I, I guess, tell me, like, tell me what your thoughts are on the road trip. Like uh, they get some lessons um, from Matthew and Edith. They get to go into like the territory of the Carmine Beast and like. They Throw throws her hat. <laughs> yeah. They what? Lady said Verona throws her hat. Yeah. I I mean, yeah, they're all clues for something. So but the road trip was really my like my favorite part, even more than okay. I know you guys like the ceremony or at the beginning. I like that too. But um but the road trip was really fun. I I liked it. And the best part about it, I mean, how could he even come up with this was that the destination is wherever you are when you've traveled one full day. I love that. Isn't that I just, cool? Yeah, really cool. I mean, I I just thought that was really neat. Even if you just end up, you know, five minutes away or wherever you are. So that was my favorite thing. And learned more about um, Matthew and Edith, I guess. So they, they're a pretty interesting couple. That's for are sure. Are you still thinking that they're going to work out? Or you still think Louise... <laughs> yeah have your thoughts yeah. changed on Matthew yeah I think so um I work at I, again <clears throat> um yeah I don't think Matthew's as innocent and nice of a guy as I thought hmm. definitely why is that yeah okay I'll just tell you it's it's because of um Edith that whole thing is disturbing I mean did you guys notice that that she's not real or she kind of is and kind of isn't. And Matthew did that. He like made her, he pieced together different spirits to make Edith who he loves. That's, that's just creepy and um, <laughs> not going to end up well. But yeah. he was so nice to Louise and he gave the jacket, you know, he like, you were like, Oh, you should take this boy home. Like, how do you square those two things, mom? I do. Because have you ever met guys like that? That are like, oh, you're so pretty. And here, take my jacket. And oh, I'll drive you home. Don't worry. You can stay at the party till two in the morning. You know, just no. He's now I've decided he's one of those. Oh, That's mm, not good. No mother, no mother turn. likes that. <laughs> no mother likes that kind of guy. No, he's he's trouble. And he's not telling mm. when he was nice to Louise, he wasn't being truthful. He wasn't genuine and I, I fell for it. I thought he was totally a good guy, but now I'm like, no, he's, he's, I don't even know the word for it. I thought kind you liked bad the, boys. That's what you just said not about that the goblins bad. and I all don't that. Like, I don't like evil boys. The, the goblins are a funny, they're going to get themselves, they're going to trip over stuff and fall in the outhouse. I mean, they're, they're dumb <laughs> and they're, and they're, they're disgusting and they're funny, but but no, they're not, but they're, they're not tricky because they can't be, you know, they're too mm-hmm. dumb. They're just going to get themselves in trouble. So that's what I prefer. But, but sneaky and tricky when I can't tell what's going on, I don't like it. Mm. So you think and all goblins are dumb? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, that's it's okay if you do. Right just... now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right now. Well, dumb. Yeah. They're just, um, Yeah. I think they're, they're just, they get themselves into trouble. They can't help themselves. So they're never going to go that far to be able to do enough evil because they're just, you know, they can't help themselves. They're going to um, do stupid little jokes and whatever they do. I think they're really amusing. I like them. <laughs> so, there so last time you said that Edith was like, lame and boring or whatever, like have, have your opinions on Edith changed or just, Matthew? Oh Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. He, he, I mean, Edith, I don't know what to think of her. And he shouldn't have made her. It's like making something that you shouldn't be messing with, you know? 
And mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. yeah, my, so something big is going to happen with Edith and that's, a, that was going to be in one of my three things, but, um, okay. okay. We can, can wait. Save that you want. I'll save it then. Yeah. It's an okay. Edith thing. Hmm. Yeah. And he even wants, Matthew wants to destroy the original Edith. I mean, that's, that's coming. So I want to go back to Charles a little bit, just because <gasps> I know you talked about Charles a lot. Uh, um, so kind of, so he told us a little bit of his backstory, like why he's and you know, forsworn and <laughs> tell us more about what you're thinking. Yeah, no, I just think that it's, um, that it's not fair. <laughs> I mean, not even close to being fair. And it wasn't even anything that he did. It was his stupid friend that he invited over. And what did he break? What was a glass of, I don't remember now. I think Charles threw a glass at the wall and then oh, um, his darn. friend stepped on it. Oh, Charles did that. Okay. But yeah. And then you're not supposed to do any harm to people. Well, he, well promised he had promised that he years and years ago that he would like, never do he, harm to his that no, friend. No, I know, but he didn't throw the he didn't throw the bottle at his friend, right? His, you know, I mean that's different. Yeah. If he threw the bottle right at his friend's head, and then the friend is, you know, gets this brain bleed and all that junk, then that's doing harm to your friend. But he got mad, threw it at the wall, and this friend decided, oh, I'm gonna go walk through that, you know. So. Um, <laughs> You know, before Charles could yeah. get a grip, get a broom, you know, so then Charles life is over, you know, at maybe his friend, maybe his friend is gonna, oh, who knows, I, I'm not gonna see this friend again, I don't think. Uh, so Charles life is just, he's it's, it's just gonna suck. He's just waiting for the bad thing to happen. That's, that's what's even worse. Why don't they just do it already? Because um, it's, it's not gonna <laughs> be good. Wait, just tell me, is this the bad thing you guys? Charles, I'm not telling we you will anything. not tell you. What do you mean? Okay, I know it is. I know it is. Okay. Then why would you need us to tell you? Oh, ha. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then. I, I guess I'll, I'm curious, like, why haven't they done anything to Charles already? Because that's going to be the bad thing. They're just stringing out the agony. They don't need mm. to. They want to make him suffer a little bit. And they oh, want to, he needs to learn his lesson, whatever that is. And they all, also, Sorry. he's like a model for the other three girls. Like, oh, be careful because. Like, don't do this, sir. Don't do this. You know, you better you, be really careful. Can you clarify who they is? Because I feel like you were sort of saying just like the hungry choir, but are you saying like more of the others are also going to hurt Charles? No, it's the whole group. It's oh, all okay. the others except the except the goblins. They they can't help themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just they're along for the fun of it. They're along for the fun of it, and they they could be the, if they can tr- cars can cause some harm, but they're not they're not um that evil. You know, they just have like you know dirty dumb like dumb little boy jokes you know that's what they are they get themselves into trouble over stuff like that and they could kill somebody but it wouldn't be like they they're not good enough to be able to plot out this whole thing they would totally get themselves you know off on a tangent and and get off the track Hmm. okay all right so i also want to talk about um what are your thoughts um on the world building of the story so far so like how would you compare um, let's say like this magic system that we've seen in the story to others you've seen like Harry Potter. Yeah, it's different though. I mean, I was thinking it was, there are some things, they all have spells and magic and, um, and there's bad stuff that happens <laughs> and they live in it. There is a real world there, you know, hmm. and there is, you know, like, um, like Kenneth, there's a real world, um, wherever Harry Potter's house was, where was that? In London, right? I think so. Yeah. Think so. And, and then also, I guess Hogwarts too, you know, they're real mm-hmm. places. You take a train to them, although that becomes that platform, whatever it is, 15 mm-hmm. and a half, 16 and a half, whatever. I have three quarters. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, you know, those become a little sketchy when you get onto that thing. And that's really fun. And that's, that's actually compares what, what, what happens in this book because of 
those diagrams can make you, or, or there's different ways you can enter or exit things and get more power. And that's definitely the same, um, hmm. different things. I mean, I, I think the diagrams are really unique to this and um, really interesting. And, you know, the triangles and little lines you put in there, and I haven't figured them out yet, but, um, but that's a little different. I don't know what else, what else is the same, you guys, or ask me specific. Well, I don't even mean like, I guess like, do you feel like, um, I guess like the whole thing with lying for one, like that's kind of interesting. Did they have that in Harry Potter though? No. You no, can but, lie. But it doesn't have that's to be like saying. Harry Potter. It's different. That's why we're, yeah, we're saying it's different. Like. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it's different. And that, that thing is really specific and you can't lie and how they take like strength or power or something from from different people and um mm -hmm. that part is is different it seems like mm -hmm. well yes but i'm like i guess because harry potter i feel like um in terms of the world world building and magic system um it, they didn't really explain um how any of it worked really it was just kind of like magic it's yeah here. yeah um <laughs> we're like part of the reason i like um the story is because they um give they're like oh like there's there's a catch you know it's not all just like it's there you can do whatever you want but they're like yeah it's like there's a reason for it um it comes from like spirits and things um and like to get into the system you have to give up ability to lie you can get you know diminished power or, or be forsworn um if you do all that so just in, I, I feel like there's more there's bigger consequences um yeah whereas harry potter it's like oh like i turned into a toad and then i <laughs> yeah yeah no I this one has there's all kinds of ways it can go based on um like even that tilted what did they say that with the way the power will shift and everything um mm -hmm. based on so many things that's really interesting so that would yeah. be kind of fun to see what happens mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm kind. I know stuff's going to happen with the girls, and that's see. I'm already sad because stuff. Something's going to happen between the three of them where it's going to either put two against one. One's going to end up at a disadvantage, and then you got to just wait and see what she does. Hmm. And the lying part will be interesting, you know. But yeah, I like that part. Like, how do you think that they're going to get around um, that? Like, the, with their parents asking them, like, "What were you guys doing last night?" You know? Yeah, that's crazy. It's got to be whatever that thing is where um, they could block. I don't remember what they called it. Oh, um, a connection blocker? Yeah, connection blocker. It has to be that because otherwise you, you, they'd have to lie. So they have to do this blockers and the, they, it worked with the police and things like that. Yeah, because otherwise they'd have to block to lie or else they'd have to do some weird thing where um, they, this is more Harry Potter, like where they told them the truth and then erased their memory <laughs> or something like that. Mm, okay. You know, so, th but they can't lie. Right. Along not. the same lines. Um, we have a murder investigation, right? Where all of the suspects can't lie. So Ooh. why is this book as long as it is? <laughs> yeah. Why don't we know who well, killed them already? Darn, that's a really good question. Why don't they just go ask, did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? And then it well, would be... What do you th yeah, what do you think? Do you think they didn't think of that? <laughs> that's what I... Okay, I won't go there. That's a little dumb. Okay, no. Wow, that's interesting. Maybe, maybe somebody in the town did it that isn't one of the others. But they can't see him, right? No, they couldn't see her. Mm -mm. Maybe like a, you know, a snowplow. It's a her, the Carmine. A snowplow? The Carmine Beast is a... Is a yeah, maybe like a snowplow ran, ran over her <laughs> and didn't see... Because they didn't see her. <laughs> Don't laugh, Jen. Why was the moon bleeding if it was a snowplow? Because <laughs> the moon is part of the others and it felt really bad. That wasn't supposed to happen. The snowplow wasn't oh. supposed to run over the beast. <laughs> So it bled in sympathy. <laughs> Wait, what? So it yes. bled in sympathy. It was just like, oh, 
my bleeding well, what heart. What else would it be so, bleeding like, for? What has been yeah. stopping uh-huh. all these others just by being rammed by cars? <laughs> like dying? <laughs> Maybe they could fly. And they I mean, are snowplows really fast? I didn't think that they were like turbo they can snowplows. They're fairly speedy. <laughs> really? Yeah, they can drive kind of like how oh, fast cars drive. In my yeah, because a beast. I don't think of that beast as being fast. <laughs> she was sort of well, you asked me, and you didn't give me I mean, any no, warning. I think so it's there. a great answer. But... No, I'm serious. Next time we do a podcast, I want all the questions, Jen. Sometimes they You're just come to with... us. I, yeah, I just, I I'm coming up with these on the fly, okay? Yeah, but that um, puts me I really in a bad... like the Carmine Snowplow uh, okay. idea. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Maybe that's what my car is going to be, everyone. So do you think, I'm going like... to make a card with a snowplow plowing down a beast and the moon crying. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? That's a big, Please do that's it. A bold commitment. You said it, so now you have to do it. Um <laughs> So, so do you think if someone like in town, like an innocent, um, accidentally killed like this big, powerful judge, like, um, are they going to have to go and become a judge and just be sucked into this magic world? Or like, do you think the snowplow is going to just like become a judge? What's the judge? Well, like... You know how the Carmine Beast was a judge? There's like they go and they meet the three this like the scorpion guy and the the guy who wears all black and then like the lady who wears white. You remember this at That's, all? That was a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fine, we need to have you write notes. They're they're called the judges. judges. So the Carmine Beast was a judge with a capital. Jay. Yes, and that's part of like they need a new one. And so, oh, um, so that's it's why it's John's going to take her. Yeah. John or the choir and they and I or the snowplow. No, I think no. Maybe John got on a snowplow. So <laughs> <just plowed him. laughs> oh so they'll gosh. be like, "Hey, John, did you do it?" And he'll be like, "No," because in his mind, he'll be like, "The snowplow did it." <laughs> like, is that what's happening? Oh, that's good, Malia. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, no, I don't think so because then Charles okay. could say. The bottle did it. Charles can say whatever he wants, Mom. Charles can lie. Yeah, Charles. Yeah, he can do anything. He can oh, lie because he he's forced. Oh, forced but he didn't really lie, did he? He just caused harm. Oh, no, but so- now that he's been forsworn, he he can lie. Mm-hmm. You can't get any farther down. The spirits won't listen to him, no matter what he does. So he can wait. Lie. So can any of the others cause harm? Uh, yeah, well, just so like, they can't lie. Well, Oh no, they do cause harm. They if, kill if, people. If right. they if they make a promise that they won't cause harm, then they can't cause harm because oh, otherwise okay. that will turn into a lie. And that for breaking the promise is real, real bad because that makes you okay. forsworn. Unless they use trick tricky wording um, where they can get around stuff, mm. and that's kind of you'll kind of see that a lot in these because. Um, yeah, you could ask someone, did you kill the Carmine Beast? And they'll be like, no, but I hired the oh. snowplow driver to kill the <laughs> Carmine Beast. Oh, you know, oh, I know it's sneaky because, yeah, it seems like it's real obvious to figure it out until you're like, crap, it's not. Yeah, see, you guys are good because you're making me want to look into this now. I really need to know. Out of curiosity, are there any other, because I know you like to read a lot, are there any other like stories about magic stuff that you'd like to compare to this or not really? I don't know if <laughs> you've read like the Mists of, of Avalon, magic. Mom. Oh, that was such a good book. I read a million uh-huh. years ago. Um, <laughs> that wasn't a magic book, though. Well, I had like, you know, fairies and things happen they were nice fairies like really pretty in the you'd be okay with those fairies yeah they were cool and those were strong women that were really powerful and neat but they they weren't well they might have been secretive and tricky but not in a bad way like this book i won't trust these guys (laughs) i wouldn't hang out with those fairies yeah Mm. miss of avalon that's a great book jen you got to put it on your list all right, I'll put it on my list. I don't have any hope for Malia anymore. <laughs> I don't. I've told you books to read. And um, 
Yeah, but yeah, Malia, you I would tried. love the mists of Avalon. No, don't go there. You didn't try hard enough. I tried. <laughs> like your life is over. No, I can't read anymore. <laughs> I have one, two, no. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine books piled up by my desk that I was like, this summer when I have time, I'll be able to read things. And I'm more busy than I was now. The latest Brandon Sanderson book that I've had like a quarter of the way done since this winter is still sitting there. <laughs> I just I can't. Okay. I can't. Okay. As a mother, I say just study for law school. <sighs> That's it. Thank you. That's your number one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay so last question before we get to like the three things and everything. Do any of the protagonists remind you of Jenny or me? <laughs> and And why? Okay, yes. now that's, you know, that's a... I, the goblins I, I, are not a protagonist. Yeah, it's what? Lucy, Avery, Verona. Oh, I was going to say, I was going to say the goblins remind me of dad. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's fair. fair. That fair. <laughs> okay, I guess, <laughs> not real, not very much, but if I had to say a couple of qualities, um, then I would say that um, Malia... That mm-hmm. that one of the main qualities that Lucy has is that she's really organized. And you're the one who, when Jenny got married, you whipped up mm. this um, Google document that you shared with all of us. And it was like, it was so organized. And even if, a, if one of the font, if the font was a little bit incorrect or not the same, you would <laughs> go a little bit berserk until you changed everything <laughs> so that it was in a perfect format. Jenny never looked at the thing. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was adding no. chunk to it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would say Malia would be the person like Lucy to be um, in charge of the investigation because you were so on it. You would be like, okay, oh, we, haven't, in, we have these people that's to pretty good. interview. Yeah. So th- it, that's the only way with Lucy because I don't think of her as angry or um, any of the other things I think of Lucy, but definitely organized. And so Jen, what do I have to say? I'll say, um, yeah. sorry, it's a, I'll it say, doesn't sound like a good start. No, no, I just, it just, you, I wouldn't really put you guys with, um, with any of them, but that kind of makes sense that yeah, you totally do the organization thing. And, um, Jenny, I will say Avery because, okay. um, because you're intuitive. You run really fast. <laughs> you do run fast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You've had your moments when you feel really alone, but haven't we all? And, True. um, yeah. So I would say, and I just really, re- I really like Avery and I like you. So is that, oh, thank you. <laughs> I like Malia too, but rude. yeah, but I'm not rude. <laughs> okay. I hate doing this comparison thing, but anyway, I guess if I had to, if I, cause it always gets me in trouble. It always does you guys. So, but well, it was um, really nice mom. Yeah. I think, okay. I think those are sweet. Yeah. I kind of, yeah. I kind of so, picked those. Yeah. We like all of the protagonists. So oh, you like, guys do. Yeah. I do yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite protagonist right now? Avery. That usually changes. Oh, that's right. You said oh, Avery. Does? I'm sorry. Yeah. Avery. Yeah. Cause yeah, I just can relate to her. Yeah. I, I okay. like her. Yeah, Malia, she's she your favorite. At- Let's tell mom our favorites. Okay, no, don't you don't know. want to. No, we can. I just, I'm, I I'm usually like a- caught between two of them. So, um, yeah, same. I'm usually in between Avery and Lucy. Wow. Yeah, and for me, it was Avery for a long time, but now I think it like might just straight up be Verona, and it's really painful to say that out loud because I love Avery, but I, lo- I, Ver- I didn't. Like, Verona was my least favorite, which, I mean, I still loved her because they're all really great. Mm-hmm. And then just, like, slowly I was like, no, I love Verona. Yeah, but are you speaking from where we are now in the book or where or later? Later, um, probably. Later. Where we are now, um, Avery was my favorite. I think I've honestly been kind of split in between those two from, like, the start. Like, not even kidding. Yeah. So I also love Lucy, but... Ha! I love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> so, which I love Lucy episode um, would you most compare to the story where we've been at? You're you're so not fair, <laughs> you guys. She's not supposed to ask questions. 
So what would I, so this one, what would I compare? I know the chocolate's my favorite. Um, it's the only one I'm I know. I'm trying to think when, yeah, same. And there's another one that's, but the chocolate one doesn't really compare to this, except eating things, you know, but the, <laughs> true, you know, you know what the, one of the best ones is, and I don't think it compares either is the Vitamita be- Vegemin. You might that's have to remind us you what that is. You guys have got to, you've got to watch that. that. It, it's this commercial she does and she's, she's like, oh, I love Vitamita Vegemin. Vitamin of Vegemin. It's so good for your health and blah, blah, blah. And then she takes a swig of it and it's like, ooh, this is delicious, you know? And then she never, and then usually when she takes a swig, she has this horrible grimace and she's about ready to barf. And and so they make <laughs> her do the commercial over and over and over, you know? And it turns out it has a whole ton of alcohol in this stuff. So at the <gasps> end, she's just stinking drunk and she's like, Vitamin Benjamin <laughs> is delicious, ah, and she's like falling over. But it's it's so great to watch well, her. There, Nobody can I do mean, it like her. It's obvious how this compares to this episode <laughs> to me because I mean it's just like the downfall of Charles. You know, like he just starts, mm. and then wow, this gets that's, more that's and deep. more right. Yeah, that's deep, Jen. <laughs> Deep. It's not deep. <laughs> I'm totally bullshitting. Like, oh, come on. That does not mean a thing. <laughs> uh, who, which out of the three protagonists would you compare to yourself, Mari? I guess you said Avery. Oh my gosh, actually, to myself. But... Wait, let me think about this. Okay, I, I'm. I can be really angry, like Lucy, and I'm super. Well, I, I, I think I'm organized, but I'm really not. I mean, I try to be organized. Uh, I mean, you can be organized in different ways. Because when you first said that okay. about Malia, I was like, "Have you seen her room?" Well, oh I mean, yeah, no, I know where yeah. things are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's those lists she makes. I mean, she's planned retreats for hundreds and hundreds of people. You're amazing, Malia. True. You're really organized. Thanks. But um, let me think of those girls. What do they do? Um, Verona. Well, I will say one thing is that you're really creative and artistic, mom, and you have a good vision, and that's like Verona. True, it's very, very Verona. Um, oh, creative. Thanks. Yeah, that's yeah. One one thing about me is I I it stuff doesn't hold me back. Like it's like when I want to brainstorm stuff, I just go. I go for anything. I don't. It, you know, it's not, it, I really get irritated when people say, well, you can't do that. Oh, that kills me. It's like the Girl Scout thing going to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just think that you think of what you want to do and then you make it happen. And and if it doesn't happen, well, you probably got someplace really great. You know, got to explain um, the Girl Stout, Scout thing to the listeners real quick. Oh, do or I? Just okay. I'll do it. Yeah. Just let them want to be a girl just scout or not. <laughs> so, so I, I was, a uh, um, girl scout mom, whatever you call those. Maybe you were a troop leader. Thank you. Troop leader for years and years. And there's this, um, and it can be really fun. And, um, and we did tons of stuff. And then when you get to about junior high, um, it's not cool to be a Girl Scout anymore. So everybody kind of dropped out except for um, Malia and a couple of her friends wanted to still do it. And um, but they didn't like their leader because they didn't get to do stuff. I don't think I think you were mm-hmm. I, I think the moms would kind of do the meetings <laughs> and you guys would run around. So Malia wanted me to be her um, troop leader, which I was really flattered with. And I thought it was really neat. So um, so we had a group of maybe four or five girls and we mm-hmm. we sorry I can't talk because there's a the cat cats. in my face <laughs> okay <laughs> is that Verona <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah I think so Verona, Hi, Verona. Just, yeah so um but anyway um with this group when they were in um junior high and high school I made them run the run the meetings which um they're supposed to you know and I would just kind of help a little bit, but they decided what they were doing and how they were doing it. And then of course, I'm like, okay, what do we do with this cookie money? And Malia's like, let's go to Disneyland. And then all the other ones, and I'm just sitting there like, okay, because some of them are like, oh, we can't do that. And then um, when 
when the other ones decided that's what we really want to do, then we told the moms or the parents and they're like, you, you're never going to do that. And that's what made me crazy. It makes me crazy when people say that to my kids, because it's not true. You know, it, it might be true, but let's see if we can make it happen. You know, if they want it, if they want it bad enough and they apparently mm-hmm. wanted it bad enough because it took two years I don't even know how many cookies we sold, but it was ridiculous. And we so ate. Oh, yeah, it was <laughs> oh, yeah. so many. <laughs> yeah, we had, and we ate yeah. so many cookies. It was not even funny. So, but um, then we did stuff like car washes and we babysat. We started this like babysitting mm-hmm. co-op thing where whoever was able to show up, they might have four Girl Scouts babysitting this one kid. And we would split the money for that night or they might have one. And it was really, it was really good. We worked it all out. So we all went for a week and um, we saw, we spent a few nights, a few days at Disneyland. We had a sister troop that took us to up in this hot air balloon thing. And oh, that was cool. And yeah. I and a, along. So <laughs> yeah. And a, <laughs> yeah. And a progressive dinner and to some Island out in, you know, LA someplace. Was Was that Balboa? Yeah. Balboa Island. And, and so that was part of it. Then we, we mostly did Disneyland, but then we went one day and visited colleges because I had to make it seem a little more legit. (laughs) And, and (laughs) and, but it was also really neat. And so we visited like three colleges in um, LA and like Loyola and UCLA and one other one. And, and some of the girls, I think maybe two of them hadn't even been off Island. So it was amazing. I was so happy to see them because I'm like, you guys can really do this, you know? So, um, that was fun. That's my girl scout story. Yeah. (laughs) Which leads into my next question. Um, what kind of badges do you think would be great for this investigation? You can't throw me questions <laughs> like this for this investigation. There's got to be, uh, you, uh, yeah, there's got to be a um, who done it badge. What, don't you think? I'm sure there's like law type badge things, or just like I an investigation. Yeah, well, maybe okay. not an investigation one. I'm sure there's not like solve the murder <laughs> like, solve a murder that's yeah. not very <laughs> well the one thing that's good is you can make up your own badges and we could have done that yeah. like um mm. yeah so we could do a solve the murder badge yeah solve so the I, murder badge. i'm i'm you know, sensing a merch opportunity <laughs> for, oh man guys design a solve the murder badge we have to look into legal stuff but do we scary. gotta get some <laughs> uh some some investigation badges people can earn and buy in a sash. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty. So you pretty might cool. want to cut this part out of the thing, but remember part, how being a part of a pitch. <laughs> okay. But no, one part one thing um that Bobby and I started working on was a um was a no pregnancy badge. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> we talked about it at P- Camp P.E. Holo, and we were going to make this pregnant girl with a big line across it. Oh, and we I were forgot gonna... about that. Yeah, it was a thing. And so we were like, okay, if you guys make this, and that's way more Bobby than it was me. Uh, but we're like, okay, if you guys make it out of high school without getting pregnant, you're going to get this badge, you know, you and we'll give you, we'll give you I a never couple hundred. badge, mom. Yeah, we'll give you yeah, a couple we'll give you a couple hundred dollars we didn't follow through we were bad bad troop leaders i'm sorry bad but moms. we talked about it a no, lot a lot when we moms. were up at camp p e holo we're like that would That's be awesome great. yeah <laughs> for for everyone um this wasn't when i was in middle school this was when i was like five because mom and bobby were like the what? original troop leaders when jenny was <laughs> like sorry. seven or eight years old um, so that yeah, was when right. that was that the was timeline really of this weird. happening. Just so you all How know, we didn't start no, that. No, I deny it. That was not you were. That had to be way later, Jen. Weren't you in my troop when you were like thirteen? Not Bobby. I don't think. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. So. Yeah. Well, we did make you your one of your first field trips was to see the Spice Girls, and I was kind of. But I was like slumped down in my seat, going, "Gosh." Uh, you know, well, tell me what you want, what you really want, you know, and there, and there's my little, like a first or second grader. It's Bobby's fault. I was dying. I don't think it was appropriate. So I'm sorry. I girls. Even, I don't even remember seeing the Spice Girls. Like we saw them at a concert. We saw Spice World, which is Spice World. Oh yeah, we saw Spice World. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, it's no, a terrible it movie, but, um, <laughs> no, but I, it was I also, have fond memories. And you, you shouldn't. It was also something that I shouldn't be showing my kids. I mean, I it just was remember purely... there were some really badly, like, like really <laughs> fake looking aliens. And there was something about like, I just remember the a bus. tour bus and yeah. like somebody getting. I wanted like, that bus. Yeah, I don't remember anything <laughs> inappropriate because that's not the it part was, that like my kindergarten no, self was, wanted to see okay, is the aliens so and then the fun dancing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Remember. I'm so happy. Yeah. No. Yeah. You should. It's fine because I don't remember anything that. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, remember anything bad. It just seemed like oh, fun, and there's a bus, and like there, there's. It's a. I don't know. Yeah, that's all I remember. Yeah, I know. And we took you all out for shave ice later, and so it was a fun outing. But no, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, we're gonna transition to the end of the podcast because Malia is very tired. <laughs> okay. All right, and has to work like a big girl tomorrow. So, um, for those of you you might not remember, or this might be your first podcast that you're listening to of ours, in which case, welcome. Um, but. We have a segment coming up called Three Things. Every day when we got home from school, our mom would ask us three things about our day. Um, and we'd have to tell her, like, good, bad, whatever. She just, like, made us tell her three things before we could go do anything else. So now we have our mom tell us three things about the section that we just read. Um, so go ahead, mom. What are your three things? Okay. Okay. My first thing is whatever happened to Louise? <laughs> I mean, where'd she go? So I wonder if she's going to pop up again. I I know. So anyway, I'm just waiting for Louise to come back. And then my second thing, this is the big one. It's like, da, 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 da. The human Edith is coming back. She is. Mm. She's not gone. She's still there someplace. And she's that's still not going to be pretty. Yeah. Because cool. remember how the, her parents kind of think she's alive or something. In, and mm. Michael is in love with the spirit one that he made Matthew. up. Matthew. <laughs> like, oh, who's yeah. Michael? Who's, who's Michael? <laughs> 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 okay. Not Michael. Matthew. Yeah. But yes. anyway. the Matthew's the human, alter ego. <laughs> yeah. The human Edith. That's going to get um, really scary. And okay. then um, I already told you my um, my third thing that I thought the... Yeah, there, I'll just mix them into one. There were two parts of mine that were really cool. And one was the destination is wherever you are when you are, have traveled one full day. I just thought that was mm-hmm. really neat. And mm-hmm. um, I wish I could do that. I just think that's kind of neat. And then um, the second thing that's creepier, but really, really good imagination is how Matthew pieced together different spirits to make Edith, you know, and, mm, um, yeah. and that was so bizarre. I really liked it. um well thank you for your three things um is there any final thoughts on this section we just read that you want to go over that we haven't addressed in questions or anything no not really i think you guys cover it okay in that case um we're gonna move on to mom's book recommendation (laughs) so every one of these podcasts um we're gonna have my mom recommend a book that we should be reading um (laughs) We okay. were joking before and saying, beside, like, instead of this book, but since she's getting into it, we'll say along with this book. <laughs> yeah, so. no, along with this book. I'm I'm into this one now. So um, I'm, I'm reading another one oh, no. that um, is oh, no. just, I yeah, <laughs> no, I'm reading another one that um, it's called The Lake. And it's basically a book about, I'm like halfway through, but it's a book about, um, it's the setting is Niagara Falls oh, no. <laughs> and it's, and it's, um, it starts out on the, this kind of odd, this odd lady who's almost a Spencer. She's 29 and a half. So 30, <laughs> she becomes a Spencer spinster. Oh. And, um, hmm. and this um, kind of strange minister guy, they, um, they get married because their parents kind of are desperate for, for them to marry somebody. And they all think, Oh, this could work. And so they just arrange it. And they, I think they, I don't, I think they've seen it, you know, gone out on a, a couple of dates or seen each other a few times at church or something. What, what time period is this? Uh, um, okay. Probably like the 19. That's a good question. 1930s or so 
Okay. Yeah. Early nineteen hundreds. So they but anyway, it's a real you know, they, they don't know each other hardly at all. And they're kind of freaked out about um, anything to do with sex. That's like, wow, like really <laughs> scary. And anyway, so what happens? I'm not going to, I keep getting into this. I'm just going to tell you that they get married. Um, so the, what's the wife's name? See, I can't even remember now. Ariel, I think. So Ariel drinks too much because she never drank anything and she's all nervous. So she's drinking too much. And um, they have a very awkward wedding night, I will say. And um, uh. and the next day he hightails it out of bed early before she can even get up, goes and tears through the gate by Niagara Falls and just throws himself over the falls. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> so that's the way... So that's the way it starts. And now, what the fuck? Now, so now I'm at this place and, and Ariel is really strange oh, and she's just hanging out all the time and won't talk to any of the parents. And she's waiting for him to appear, but she knows he's not going to because it was a bad night. And, and she How thinks bad she like touched his dick to and he threw himself like, off Niagara Falls. Wait, you both, what? She like it touched his really- dick and he freaked out and jumped off Niagara Falls. That's basically the beginning of the story. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm at this. It's not funny. It's ghost? kind of tragic. No. Well, this folks, is if a, that doesn't hook you in. True story. I don't know what will. This <laughs> is a true really a, story. Okay. It's not Wait, a true what? story. It's not a true story, but he's a ghost. So, I mean, what are you doing, Malia? You, what? He's a ghost? He's not a ghost. That's what I was trying okay. to say. It's it's a, no, it was bad. It was a bad beginning. Just, it you know stuff happened and he couldn't he couldn't handle it he was just a yeah i i i didn't like him anyway but anyway <laughs> she could do better and um so so now she's involved somehow the guy that went with her every day when she went to find the body they they would oh just go God. like fishing around waiting for this body to be found somewhere around the falls and it took mm. a week and then but this one guy was kind of fascinated by her um, you know, the way she was so forlorn and lost and, and would go there every day and ignore everybody and, um, and just would stare at the water and he fell in love with her because what? she, because that's the, that's where this book goes. And so now <laughs> she headed back and he tried to forget her. Cause you know, he's like, don't fall in love with her. She's weird. You know, she's a weirdo. And um, I don't want anything to do with this. But now he just got in his car and drove 200 miles to wherever she lives and found her and picked all these wildflowers in the field and showed up at her door. You're raising your hand again. And basically (laughs) went to her house and, and he's just proposed to her. And she's kind of like, what? You, You know, so anyway, that's where I am right now. So I know everybody's dying to read this. It's it's <laughs> The Lake by Joyce Carol Oates. In case you are, you know. You know that author name just sounds like it makes sense. So should we us. actually <laughs> read this? What? Like you you actually think people should read this? You haven't explained why well, you think people should read this. <laughs> because it's it's another, you can, because you can't put it down. I didn't say it was a good book. I just said if you, <laughs> I won't recommend this as one of the great books of all time. I won't. But it's what I'm reading right now. So it's on my mind. And yeah, okay. you kind of need to see what happened. First, you need to see what happened on the wedding night. And I'm not going to even go there. And then the Do second you. thing. Okay, how bad Okay, no, I, I I'm not question. going there. I'm not going there. And then the second thing, you've got to see if she really gets married to this guy and what happens. Okay. So there. I, I'm, I'm not asking for details, but can you just tell me, like, was it that bad to, like, make it, like, make it so that he, him throwing himself into Niagara Falls makes sense? Was it that well, bad? Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I could have handled it, but but apparently <laughs> apparently yeah, it was that bad for him. I'm just going to say that. He couldn't he couldn't hmm. go there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's bad sex right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now huh. you're going to ask if I ever had, I, and I know you guys haven't we, sex we that bad. We no. weren't going to. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, that's right. No. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to talk that's about that, but rules. since you haven't like gone no. to Niagara Falls anytime, you know, <laughs> throw yourself off. Yeah, I, I feel like throw it hasn't myself been over that any bad. cliff. No. 
Yeah, so that's good. Um, okay. Wow, I don't even know what to say. Um, <laughs> I think I that guess was a good place to end it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess you guys can read that book if you want. Um, <laughs> or Google a synopsis. It's probably better. Yeah, Google a synopsis. That's probably the best way to go. Um, but, you know, you know, if this if this story speaks to you, then, you know, you do you. <laughs> great okay and don't forget um, macarthur park because that's worth just listen taking a listen to yeah, yeah that's true up. just go ahead and listen to that well if we if we remember we'll link we'll link it somewhere in the description box and you can just click on that and uh see what we were talking about but Coffee park is melting no malia <laughs> no don't do no. it no uh, okay um on that note uh, we want to remind everyone slash announce that we're doing another giveaway. So our mom is going to make a card um, again, based on this episode or these sets of chapters, the set of chapters. Um, and you can win this lovely handmade card based on pale. Um, so to enter the giveaway, um, either comment on the Reddit post for this episode or tweet at, pale comparison with the hashtag our mom critiques wild bow um we'll enter the names in a random drawing and send one to the winner um for those of you who don't know beleg tall um won last episode so yay um yay! we really hope you get the card um i sent it it's international so i it doesn't track beyond the u.s borders so i <laughs> <laughs> it gets to you yeah if uh, not then some random uh person's gonna be really confused um by the type of cards that they're receiving in the mail thanks for listening everybody if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please subscribe share it with your friends and leave a rating and review if you'd like to support wild bow go to patreon.com slash wild bow and if you want to support me, check out my blog at www.createwithcheryl.me. You can also check out Pale in Comparison, a podcast where Malia uses her knowledge of Pale to guess what happens in Pact, one of Wildbow's other web serials. And I try to not give away anything. In addition, check out all the other great shows in the Doof Network and support us at patreon.com slash doofmedia. You can follow us on Twitter at Pale Comparison. Or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Also, be on the lookout for that Reddit post where you can share your thoughts on this episode and enter our giveaway. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>